Hi, everybody. It's Henry DeVries. Whoa! You're so loud. <laughs> I scared the life out of you there. <laughs> Wake up. We're starting. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, I'm glad you're here, too. Thanks, Eileen. You're so uh, I got a lot of friends uh, on today, so that's great. Uh, Craig Louder, how the heck are you? Go Cards. Oh, sorry, go Cubs, whichever you want to do. But go Excuse July go 24th Cardinals. to the start of baseball. Okay. Today I'm talking about client attraction chain reaction in the new normal. We, we should have put the new normal in scare quotes, but I don't know what normal is anymore. It's in scary times. I recently, I don't want to alarm you, but I tested positive for cabin fever. So I hear it's contagious, but we are separated this way. So I hope this is good. So, I'm great today. Yesterday was rough. Let me tell you, yesterday was rough. I realized I had nothing to look forward to on my calendar for a year. So, I had postponed our second honeymoon to Yosemite, and I rebooked it last night for October. I hope there'll be a vaccine and we'll get to go then. Uh, we're going to go to New York again. We're going to go to Chicago again. It's just postponed to 2021. I'm doing a lot online. So today, this is a lot about what can you do online. And I've come out with a new book this week, Client Attraction, Chain Reaction. If you remember back in science class, a chain reaction was a series of chemical reactions that built upon each other. So sometimes you symbolize it with those row of dominoes where you put one domino over and all the dominoes fall. It's a forest fire as a chain reaction. It starts with a spark and then there's fuel and oxygen and it keeps growing and growing. A snowball that goes down a hill and gathers momentum and gets bigger and bigger. I've never seen this myself. I live in California. Um, we didn't know if snow was really real, but I got to go to Chicago and I had proof that snow is real. So that's the snowball. Um, speaking of Chicago, it was in 1942 under the bleachers at the University of Chicago that they first split an atom and that was a chain reaction that changed the world. What is it in business? It's a series of things that you do that build upon each other. One person said the magic's in the mix, but it's not, there's not one silver bullet I'm gonna give you. Do this one thing and you're gonna have all the clients you want. It doesn't work that way. And I've heard it said that success is never purchased, it's rented. We've gotta keep doing it. You're not gonna get discovered. This is not about being discovered and people are gonna find you. This is about you being proactive and keep bringing people in. So there are seven ways to do that I'm gonna talk about, but I really wanted to focus today on the speaking part. So in essence, I'll give you the seven real quick. Uh, putting on small scale seminars, and we used to do it in person, and now we do it on Zoom. I was doing one a month on Zoom starting in January. We've kicked that up to two a month on Zoom. And I'm talking to more people on these Zoominars than I were in my live events. And the cost to put them on has gone to zero. It's just our cost on LinkedIn to invite people in. So I'm not having to rent rooms at the Marriott for $250 to $500. Sometimes I had to pay for my own travel. I was happy to do it. I did that 100 times around the country. And it built indie books up to where we have over 100 book projects out there, 200 titles. Uh, we've got uh, you know, 50 books in process right now. Lots going on because of that strategy. So we're going to talk about that today. Number two, and this is in rank order, the second best thing you can do is speak in front of target-rich environments that other people have gathered. Other people have put the group together, and you get to be there. If you get paid to do it, we call that the perfect crime. It's the perfect crime of being paid to market to people. Um, yes, I speak in the five to $10,000 range. That's great when I get it. Uh, I call that the perfect crime. But that's not the real purpose of being out there. It's to find clients. 
It's what happens as a result of the talk. The challenge is some stages you can't get on unless you have the cred of being an author and other things you've done to get on that stage. There are other stages where you waive your speaking fee. Oh, that's an important note. We never speak for free. We waive our speaking fee. We do one or two pro bono speeches a month. That's another thing to say. So sometimes you're gonna do a pro bono if the group is right. You're gonna waive your speaking fee if the group is right. You're gonna do it for favor. Uh, our business model, we, we say it's built on generosity. We also say, uh, it's built on another famous uh, business where one day, and this day may never come, but a favor may be asked of you. And if it's within your power, you should grant it. So many times I'm asked for a favor to speak for somebody. It's not a fee. Other people have been very generous with me and they speak. We're actually cross-promoting each other. We're putting each other on each other's stage. I wanted to give you something where, oh, here's the magic secret formula for getting strangers to book you and pay you money. I haven't found it yet. I've been searching for 20 years. What I did find is building relationships was getting me on the stages and getting me money and getting me clients. So the secret has always been there. It's relationships. So build relationships with the people you want to speak at. Right now, I want to speak more for large advertising agencies. So what am I doing? I'm researching my next book. I'm researching articles for Forbes.com. I'm researching articles for advertising trade publications. And I'm interviewing the heads of large advertising agencies. I'm giving them my book as a thank you for talking to me. I'm writing about them in Forbes. Um, Guess who they might be likely to call when they're putting on a retreat and would like to have a business development speaker work with them on a one-day retreat. That's how the relationship thing works. So, Devin, why don't we start up the slideshow? They say you have to have some slides these days on Zoom, so I don't know who they are, but I'm going to listen to them. We'll give you some slides as we're talking here. So, we're ready. Off we go. Um, I just want to prove that you know how to use the chat box. Go to the chat box feature there at the bottom, hit chat, and uh, tell me where you live. And we'll get all kinds of things on where people are calling in from. So the where you live is just a sample of how you can do something like this. There are other questions you can ask. But the chat is get people to use the chat feature when you're doing something on Zoom. Do remote. We've also done the polls. They have the poll feature and all that. Um, we have, uh, we were very blessed that a lot of people signed up today. If it was 12 or so, I would do a lot more interaction with the people on. When it gets over than that, uh, we've got 22 participants. It's a little rough to mic share on a Zoominar. So just something to think about. I'm learning about Zoom all the time. I'm trying to get my PhD in Zoom. Um, so. We're going to talk today about the 16 ways to speak and create a client attraction chain reaction. I said the number one thing, small scale seminars. I said the number two thing to do is get booked. So you know, real quick, the number three thing is to get published, not only with a book, but um, get people to write about you. Um, I have my Forbes.com column. If I haven't written about you yet and you want to pitch me on a Forbes idea on how I could write about what you're doing and it has something to do with business development, uh, send an email to henry at indiebooksintl.com and just put Forbes in the subject line and I'll give you the instructions on how to pitch me and how that works. I have to write five columns a month, or I'm sorry, I get to write five columns a month and paid for it. So I got it, but I'm like the guy in the old donut commercial. I wake up every morning, got to make the donuts. I wake up, got to write the Forbes column. So it's a drum beat, you have to do it. But there's opportunities there. A lot of other people write and cover things and how could you get on their radar screen? Number four is to find your target rich environment, your groups. Uh, I do a lot of work for independent consultants. I 
help independent consultants attract high paying clients by marketing with a book and speech. So I, I like to bump into them. I speak at places like Women in Consulting and the Institute of Management Consultants. Pro bono is the fourth strategy. So I volunteer, I'm working this year, it's the fourth time on helping to put together their national conference. This year it's gonna be virtual. Uh, we're booking speakers. We got Malcolm Gladwell and Judy Carter and uh, some others will be announced soon to speak there because it's virtual. Um, it's saving people thousands of dollars to attend because they don't have to fly to Boston and stay in a hotel and lowered the price. I'm going more for inclusion. Um, I get clients because I do volunteer work for them. Number five is networking. And I know a lot of us are going networking. Where do we network today? I don't want to network. Um, there are online opportunities to network. I, I do them for my own authors. There are other things where there is networking going on. Uh, six is your internet game plan. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. There's some internet game plan things you need to do. And then seven is a paid seminar where people would pay you money because of the proprietary research you have on how they compare to others. We'll talk about that. So I'm going to go off of the slideshow now. Oh, before we do, you want more details on this? Client Attraction Chain Reaction is on sale for the rest of the month for 99 cents on Kindle. So you can go buy it for 99 cents on Kindle. I'd love it if you did, and if you gave me an honest review, just an honest review of what you think. Because as an author, we're measured in part by how many people have reviewed our book. So that's something you need to do. I need to reach out to more people. I know some of you have done it already. I appreciate that, thanks. Okay, let's go to the 16 things. Take notes. If you want this list, uh, just send an email to Henry at IndieBooksintl.com and go 16 ways or 16 way checklist. I'll be happy to send it to you, but I'm gonna talk it through. It's more important that we talk about the how of these things rather than here's the list. The number one thing I said in, in my books and all my speaking is the best thing you can do are small scale seminars that you host with four to eight in attendance. Four to eight is a magic number. Um, when we get above those numbers, we're really more doing a larger event. We're doing a workshop or we call them summits. But I want to bring in Devin DeVries from our office. She works with our authors to put these events on. They've been game changers for people. And I want her to give the how. I believe you need to be generous with your information. Be generous in giving the how. It's not like, oh, you know, you must be in our inner circle to get this. No, we're happy to share it. Devin, why don't you wheel in and take it away. Hello. But as Henry said, we are really big on the small scale seminars because we've seen them be such a game changer. Uh, this is how we have grown our business over the last six years. Uh, we can trace back over 80% of our clients to this strategy. And so we've been kind of, you know, spreading the word on this for a long time and we're trying to encourage our clients to do it. But what we found would happen is that it would be intimidating to them. So I just want to kind of share what exactly we mean by a small scale seminar and kind of the marketing tools we use to fill the, the rooms either in person or virtually. So when we say small scale seminar, this is a no cost or very low cost event is usually what we're looking at. It's a way to share your expertise and be generous with information um, so that they can get kind of a, a taste of what you do and your personality. And that's what's gonna attract them to you and have them want to hire you. Uh, one concern that we get a lot is people think, well, if I give it away for free, they're not gonna wanna hire me. And that's a myth we wanna dispel. Uh, that's not the case at all. Because what you're gonna be doing is you are giving away helpful information, but it's on kind of a general basis. Um, so 
they'll take in the information, but then what they're going to want to do is hire you for the specifics of their situation and how you can help them there. So I would say that would be the first myth we would want to just get off the table. Um, as we've seen time and time again, they will still pay you for your expertise and your time, even if you share information. And then we used to, obviously we used to do a lot of in-person events, which we've had to kind of scale back on. And for those, I would say it would be anywhere between 90 minutes to three hours based on you know, your audience and your topic. But now for virtual events, an hour max is what I would say for timing. Um, even better if you can have content be more 30 to 45 minutes and then leave a good chunk for Q&A, interaction. You want to have a conversation. You don't want to just be talking at them the whole time. So, you know, plan in areas for Q&A and that will help the overall um, success of the event. I would also always recommend recording it and posting it after the event. Because what we're finding is about half of the people that sign up show up live. But then if we post it, we get a lot of views after. So you want to give them that opportunity to still see you even if they missed the live event. Now I'll share a quick story about one of our clients, Michael Haig, and how he used this strategy. So Michael is an amazing um, expert storyteller. He comes from Hollywood and script consulting. Um, people like Will Smith call him up when they have a project to get his advice. Um, but he came to us a few years ago for his new book, Storytelling Made Easy. And this was for business people. And he wanted to teach them how to use his storytelling techniques to attract clients and win over prospects. But this was a totally new audience for him. So he didn't know, how do I get in front of these people? And we said, you need to do the small scale seminars. But he was very hesitant. Um, he was used to being brought into workshops for fiction authors and big events. So he never really had to do his own event marketing. He said, it's okay, we'll help you. We'll teach you how to do it. And so what we were able to do for Michael is this process that we developed using LinkedIn to fill rooms. And I'll just give the quick kind of overview now, but if you'd like more details, we have a white paper on it. We're happy to send it after. That kind of gives examples of what we're talking about. But basically we, we outlined the who, the what, where, and then we use LinkedIn filters. I love LinkedIn because all of that information we all put in our profiles is searchable. So we were able to identify we wanted to look for marketing professionals. He was going to be in the Portland area for another event. So what we decided to do was just add a day onto his trip, rent out a hotel meeting room. So that was going to be our geographic location. So we were looking for marketing professionals, you know, within an hour drive of Portland, Oregon. And then we just set a number goal of how many people we wanted to be in the room. And as Henry said, we actually recommend that smaller is better for interaction purposes, because uh, you really do want to make a personal connection if all, all possible. Um, but Michael hadn't done an event before, so he felt like bigger was better. So we, we d agreed on a number together, which was he wanted to get two dozen in the room. So that's what we did for the first event. And using LinkedIn, we were able to get 23 people to sign up, which was pretty good. And 19 showed up the day of. And the other thing we always recommend doing for an event is having a next step, like a follow-up that they can do for you at the end that you always wanna offer. So for Michael, we, we put together a form with just, you know, if you want to join the newsletter, but then there was an offer of a no cost strategy call to have with him after the event. And at the end of the event, 18 of the 19 people had checked, yes, 
I want a follow-up call. Uh, the 19th person was actually his sister-in-law that had come. So we actually count it as a 100% success rate. And he had several follow-up calls. Within a week, got a client that covered the cost of that whole, you know, adding a day onto the trip, renting a meeting room, paying for marketing help within a week. And then in the weeks that followed, more of those people turned into clients. And he was so excited about how well it went. The very next month, he repeated the process in Nashville. So we helped him again, write the LinkedIn messages, send them out for him, filled the room. And in this case, he did agree that smaller would be better. So we went with 15 people. And in that one, he had somebody hire him that very day. They didn't even wanna wait for the strategy call. So that's how powerful it can be. If you have the right topic for your right audience, they're going to love the information you share and want to follow up with you. And then I'll just add, as Henry mentioned, we had started doing virtual events in January, but by the time April rolled around, we were 100% virtual. And it has been a learning curve, but we have seen, we're still able, the same marketing strategy we use has worked to fill the virtual events. The offer that we give at the end for a strategy call continues to work. And just this month alone, we've gotten two clients as a direct result of our virtual events. So that's the message we wanna leave you with. It's a powerful tool. If you want the details in writing, email me, I'm happy to share. With that, I'll give it back over to Henry. Thanks, Devin. Hey, I wanna do uh, it's like a, a timeout to, to examine something Devin did, not to put you on the spot, Devin, but you did it well. Devin just didn't come up with that story off the top of her head. She mined that story from the different people she'd helped. And it started with, okay, what was our success? Well, Michael was a success. How did Michael struggle at the beginning? Oh, Michael was afraid to put on these events. Who was the mentor? Devin came and showed him how to do it, was hands-on to get him to do it, and then he goes from mess to success. And the moral of her story is small-scale seminars work. What about your work? Are you mining the success stories that you have, where in under two minutes you can tell a story of how your prospect or client struggled had a dilemma to overcome, then you came in, gave them advice, there was kind of pushback, I'm not sure if I can do this, and then they do it based on your advice and they succeed, and then you tell the moral of the story. Many people get it mixed up, they start to tell the story, well, well let me tell you about uh, me, and let me tell you about how I helped somebody named Michael. Well, you just told the story that way where you made yourself the hero and you made your client the damsel in distress. You're the knight in shining armor that's gonna rescue this poor dumb client from their problem. This is not good storytelling if you wanna get clients because nobody likes to be cast in the role of damsel in distress. They're the hero of the story. They're likable people, make them likable, but they have a problem and they come to you. That's how you meet. You give them some advice and they don't say, well, great, thanks, I'll do that. It's, that's the way I call the Brady Bunch story. Oh, Craig, that's how I have smooth sailing with my selling forever? Okay, I'll do it. And it worked and we all lived happily ever after. That's like the Brady Bunch. Thanks, Dad, I never looked at it that way. I'll do it, yay. It's like boring. There has to be struggle in the story. They have to give you a little pushback. Oh, I don't know, Janice, if I could do that. Um, not sure. Well, yes, you can, and I'll show you how. You know, it wasn't easy, but eventually it worked, and they had success. So that's storytelling 101. I wrote the book Persuade with a Story. If you want a free copy of that book, send an email to Henry. 
and just put persuade with a story in the subject line and I'll send you a free copy of the book. Okay. Number two, private invitation only summits that you host with 12 to 24 in attendance. Okay, you can do these online. Uh, my business partner, Mark LeBlanc, has done his Achiever Circles and had 140 of them before he started taking them virtual. He says, I don't think I'm ever going to do a live Achiever Circle weekend again. I'm going to do it virtually because there's no expense, there's no travel. People can come from anywhere. They limit the number. I'm doing a retreat starting tomorrow for authors who want to speak more. It's like what we're talking about today, but we're going to go three hours on Thursday, three hours on Friday. There's homework. Okay, you can charge for this. Uh, if somebody is not a client, I'm charging them $1,000 to attend. And then I'm giving them two private sessions after it to work with them. If they are a past client of mine, a recovering client, you could say, if they're a recovering client, uh, $200. If they're a current client, $0. So you can do this through Zoom. Um, take a break every 50 minutes, have guest speakers. Heck, look for opportunities where you could be the guest speaker. I'm bringing in Robin Ryan, who's, as her own publicist, has gotten 2,000 media interviews, including appearing on Oprah and Dr. Phil. She got ABC to call her America's top career counselor, which goes on all her literature now. Okay, she's going to share secrets how to do that yourself. The other thing is, in this event, people get to network with each other. I have everybody speaking. And I'm going to say, you can now say you spoke at a conference. You can link in with each other and say, oh, I heard Craig speak at this conference and he was a great speaker. Because we need those testimonials. Also, to be a speaker, you can't recommend somebody unless you've heard them speak. It might only be five minutes, but you heard them speak. Um, I attend as many of Mark's Achiever circles as I can. One of the reasons, of course, is I get great stuff. But the other thing is just purely selfish. Um, I get to speak anywhere from five to 17 minutes in front of 12 targets. Some are clients, some are past clients, some are future clients. I, I see it as a metric. I used to have a metric of two showcase speaking opportunities a month. That meant I am in front of a target-rich audience. I'm showcasing what I do. I'm probably not being paid. I've got eight this month that we'll talk about. And I could do more. So there is a lot of opportunity to do this online. And we'll share it. So you could put on your own event. Um, I have two slots. Uh, two people had to cancel this week. So I have two slots for that retreat. If anybody's interested, you can talk to me offline. Okay, public seminars that you or others promote and charge admission to attend. Um, yes, that was, ver that was in the other world, but people are moving to it virtual. New normal means if you're a seminar company, uh, your choices are saying, well, let's hang it up, or well, let's wait for a vaccine, or let's pivot, and let's do these online and charge people money for online. And people are charging money to people to attend these online but they can charge less than they used to because it's online. You reduce a lot of expenses. It reduces the attendees' travel expenses. Those opportunities are there. Uh, four, in-house paid workshops that you pay to present to one company only. Okay, so I know a lot of people are thinking, well, that went away. No, it just changed. We staggered for 60 days going, what is this? And somewhere around, oh, I don't know, May, we go like, oh, look, we're going to be doing this for a while. Yeah, just because the mall's half open doesn't mean I want to get on airplanes and run around. So what was happening was companies are actually setting that up virtually. I have one company, we need to pull the trigger on it, but they want me to present to their company virtually for two hours every month for a year. It's, it's, you say, oh, that's training or that's coaching. Well, 
for me, it's over $1,000 a month for each time I'm just in front of my computer for two hours helping people. So that work is out there. So the money has always been on the corporate company side more than the association side. Companies have retreats, companies have workshops, companies have other events, and as they pivot, they're gonna need to take them online so you can be the online person. So I would not wait for, for the vaccine. I would start being in there now. Um, also associations, I, you know, I, I was, uh, I'm a baseball fan as a lot of you know. I had a quality at bat. I didn't get a hit on this one, but I had a quality at bat for a group that was gonna pay me $5,000 to obviously they made the wrong choice and got somebody else, but somebody got $5,000 to speak at their conference next February. They're planning that that's gonna be live. Um, I have a conference in March, but I don't know if that's gonna happen live next year, we'll see. But they're out there. Um, so five are those local and national association meetings that if you wanna be a keynoter, the best book, I've ever read is The Message of You by Judy Carter, The Message of You. And Judy makes the point that you think there's an oversupply of speakers like us, authors and experts, and there's an undersupply of people willing to pay for the keynote. It says, that's wrong. There's an undersupply of speakers who can have a message and also be entertaining. The, the, the four bagger is you can make people think, you can engage their, their hearts, you can stir their souls, and you can tickle their funny bone. You can make them laugh, you know, laugh, cry, think. Um, and here's a magic phrase for stirring souls. Um, if you think the company does a noble work, tell them you do a noble work. When I spoke to Aflac, one of the things I pointed out to all these people is as, as Aflac, when they're selling these benefits that take care of people when a disaster hits, like a car accident or a heart attack or cancer, I said, you are keeping food on people's table, you're keeping gas in people's gas tank, and you're keeping a roof over their head. You do a noble work. People need to be reminded they do a noble, noble work. It'll also help you be engaged. Um, I made them uh, I'm proud to say I made them laugh and I made them cry. Um, actually, the order is you make them cry and then you make them laugh. <laughs> leave them laughing, don't leave them crying. Um, it's hard to do, but that's what you aim for. Now, there's other things that you can get booked for that is not the paid spot are needed and will promote you. Every conference has breakout sessions, panelists, roundtables. So for that Institute of Management Consultants, I put together a panel of five people on business development and I'll be interviewing them as part of it. So I'm not being paid for that. It's a sponsorship. Um, in fact, on sponsorship, uh, we also got a client this month just because we sponsored that event. They found us on the sponsorship page because they were a sponsor too. And we were what they were looking for. So pro bono, think about it. Okay, now radio and television, where you get interviewed for how to advice. Radio is still going on. Internet radio is going on. Television is going on. They just interview you over Zoom. It used to be Skype. I think the Zoom quality is better. Um, in the past, I've had authors interviewed where They'll be in Phoenix, Arizona. A Bloomberg was in New York, and President Obama, this will date it, but President Obama was in Miami giving a speech. So they had the Obama speech, and then they cut to my author in Phoenix, and they had a green screen behind her. She was in this little cramped office park space, but it looked like all of Phoenix was behind her. And, uh, you know, we're coming live to Phoenix to talk to Mary Walshock. So, these things are still out there. Now, radio and TV doesn't pay, but if you can get on TV, even like local TV, the video of that is golden for you.
get that video up on YouTube. Find out how it can get shared. Uh, there's just something magical about TV. Uh, Bill Woodich, one of our authors, got on the Steve Harvey show three times, and not for a couple of minutes, but for the whole segment, and two million people watched each episode. Now, now he's graduated to a serious radio program and a McGraw-Hill bestseller, and he's speaking for $15,000 a speech. So that video of him on Steve Harvey sure helps. I mentioned Robin Ryan. I mean, she milked Oprah and Dr. Phil. She's still milking Oprah and Dr. Phil. If it was, if it was me, I'd be milking Oprah and Dr. Phil. Uh, it helps. Okay, podcasts. So I'm a little bit of a contrarian on podcasts. Here's my contrary position. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars to create your own podcast and do it. Nothing wrong with it. You just don't need to do it because you can be a guest on everybody else's podcast. Last thing I saw was a million podcasts out there and they're all looking for content. There's an old saying by Paul Harvey, uh, the late Paul Harvey, the radio announcer, you know, page two and the Husqvarna and now the rest of the story, that Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey said the secret of speaking is not changing speeches, it's changing audiences. So if you put on a podcast, you've got to build an audience and then you don't have that much content, so you got to put other people on. I just did a podcast this morning uh, for one of our authors. Uh, you know, God bless her for putting me on. I, I'm doing a lot of podcasts these days. Um, CEO peer groups like Vistage. Um, Vistage, if you don't know it, world's largest peer-to-peer -peer CEO group, 23,000 CEOs, founded in 1957. Uh, I had done like two dozen Vistage events. I had four booked in uh, April and uh, May. And I thought, well, you know, they canceled all Vistage travel, the Vistage can't meet together, maybe they'll reschedule me. Um, and they reached out to me and said, we need you on business development and persuade with a story now more than ever. Uh, we just need you to do it on Zoom. And so I'm on the Zoom learning curve. I did it on Zoom. Um, the, the one hiccup, because it's not easy, this one hiccup was this group. They wanted to meet in person Social distancing, six feet apart. Some were wearing masks. And then they wanted me on Zoom. I said, I'm coming in like big brother. You know, I'm big brother on a TV and I'm interactive. So they had to pass the laptop computer around when it was the person's opportunity to talk with me and tell a story. And I'm like, okay, that's the weirdest speech I've ever given. And I had some runners up before that one, but it worked. You can make it work. Um, Vistage pays me $500, and they're supposed to be announcing this week that I don't think they're going to pay to travel speakers around, or they're going to discourage it, even in the new normal when, when we can travel, because they're, they're saving so much money. But I'm liking it, too, because I'd rather spend three hours in front of my computer, get $500, make connections, then travel three days to go to a city, get $500 and a per diem and my airfare reimbursed. I would do an event the next day in, in Atlanta and Chicago and the other places they sent me. It was good for that. But I'm wondering if I need to spend that airplane time. College courses for extended studies. Many people miss this and they were going online for years. I was the dean, uh, assistant dean for continuing education at UC San Diego. We were already moving in that direction. Now they're taking it all in that direction. They still need to train people, but they don't want the liability of putting people in classrooms. The legal liability is huge if people get uh, COVID-19 because they attended a class if the college, you know, held classes too soon. So the reason I talk about this is not what you make. I used to make $75 an hour. I might teach 27 hours online for that. So that wasn't the real money. What's that, you know, 1800, something like that. Um, 
it was the clients I got, including a million dollar client. And one of my guest speakers got a million dollar client as a result of speaking at continuing education. So look into that. And in addition to being the instructor, look up who the instructors are who are teaching what you want to talk about and offer to be a guest lecturer. You know, pro bono guest lecturer. Again, you don't have to do the 27 hours to impress them. One is all you need and come in. And the person who teaches the course might be very grateful. I know I was when I had guest speakers. I actually used to pay my guest speakers $25. I said the honorarium was $25, more honor than rarium. And still they were happy to do it. Okay. Public workshops that are a fundraiser event where you get paid a percentage of the gate. I've done this many times. Uh, the Institute of Management Consultants, I approached them. And instead of being their breakfast speaker for an hour, I said, let's put on a three hour workshop and I'll do it as a fundraiser for you. And they said, a fundraiser, what's that? And I said, why don't you charge people $99? You don't have to pay me my $5,000 fee. Just we'll split the gate. Well, the DC chapter had 36 people. Um, so I got $1,800. Again, you know, Costco money, it's not what I'm really living on. It was I picked up several clients with a lifetime value of $15,000 a piece at that event. I average over $10,000 in lifetime value every time I speak of something like that. So that's why I'm doing it. But the chapter said it was the most successful, well attended event they've had in years. And it put $1,800 in the coffers that uh, they didn't have. Their, their budget was tight. So I've done this for the Public Relations Society of America. I've done it for other groups. Um, I've taught authors to do this. Uh, it's a way where they, you get them expanding their thinking. What you want to make sure of is that they're going to put energy into promoting the event and they're going to find a venue. But if they're a nonprofit association, they can find venues for free. And they've got a mailing list. So they've got some, they've got two huge hidden assets right there for your event. So you, when we're flying around, you need to pick up your own travel or build it in. You know, that that's the first thing that gets covered is your airfare. I just keep it simpler and do the 50 50. Okay. Chamber of Commerce events, uh, those are live things. They do special seminars. Uh, Chamber of Commerce is not good for me. I don't speak at chambers anymore. I did it on the way up when I was promoting my advertising agency. It, it reaches local business people. Um, they're having to go virtual now, if that is your market. Um, teleseminars and webinars that people put on. Uh, and you get to speak at their event. Where are those where you could volunteer to do it? Um, I'm not putting Craig on the spot, but I see Craig there and I know he's got a business development group in Chicago and they probably don't want to meet uh, right now, but they probably still have the same needs. What could they put on like a teleseminar or a webinar that would help people? Zoominar is also. Um, there are those promoter 50-50 events. This is where you have a, a product, something like an information product for $500 that you um, sell. And there's this promoter who puts your target rich audience into the room. And if you sell the product, I call these pitch fests, really. I, I don't really like them. But I don't want to speak against anybody who does them. But you're pitching something as part of it. And then you're giving 50% of what you sell to the promoter. They pulled the people in. This is out there. It's a model. Um, it's a real, where have you spoken and what was your sales percentage? It's all really about numbers. Um, so it's out there. Um, Pre-recorded audio and video products. Uh, you know, I mentioned that proprietary research study I'm doing. I, I helped one uh, author, uh, Lisa Norell, she did a series of interviews with IT executives. And you talk about trends. Um, what are you going to invest more in? 
next year? What are you going to cut back on next year? What's your biggest strategy? And then got them to agree that she could sell the recordings. And these were 20 leaders in the field and sold it for $247. And people would buy that. The real thing was, oh, let me, you know, this, this lease is interesting. Maybe she could consult with growing our IT business. There is an event at the Hotel Del Coronado. They wanted to charge her $500 to have a booth. And I said, yeah, don't do that. Call them up and ask them if you could do a fundraiser for the group. And they'll say, a fundraiser, what's that? And you'll say, well, I have this information product. And would you like a flyer? And if you put a flyer in the bags for everybody, I'll give you 50% of the sales. And they said, I don't know, Lisa. Would you be willing to come to the conference and speak for five minutes on what the offer is? <laughs> so she paused three seconds for dignity, said yes. That's how she got 45 appointments with IT executives. She, she sold some product, made a little money, uh, made some money for the association, but more important, uh, she got tens of thousands of dollars worth of business from that. So that's some of the power of these things. Um, the 15th thing is uh, service clubs. When we're going live, um, some service clubs I am happy to speak at because of the membership. There are other ones that I wouldn't cross the street to speak at because of the membership. You just have to know. Um, in San Diego, where I live, the downtown Rotary is the movers and shakers. It took me years to get on that stage. And there's the Carlsbad uh, Rotary, uh, same thing, movers and shakers. It's a big city. Other ones are kind of like, uh, gee, if they can get 10 people at the meeting, they're happy. Um, so you know your area. And is it a target-rich environment for you? That is always the filter question. Last but not least, videos you make for YouTube. And I'll give you the magic number, 90. 90, 90 seconds. It's short attention span theater. And one thing to know is for how to requests, YouTube is getting as many searches as Google. And then people want to see a video on it. Google's okay with that since they own YouTube. So they're making money either way. But you're eliminating half the searches if you're not having YouTube videos on your subject. You know, and I'll pick on Craig, how to increase sales, how to build a sales organization. How, what are the how-to questions your people are asking? 90-second video. How can you do it? On Zoom, you have a background. You have, I have an O-ring light. I have this other little side light that we do. Um, this is not cost a lot. We, we spent a little more on the camera. I think we're into this for $200 to up our game. Devin, what does this thing behind us cost? A couple, couple hundred, you know. So it's, you know, since we have to relocate in the house, you're all forgiving right now. But usually this is set up in my office. It's a lot more professional looking. I don't have to worry that the dog is going to come through and start barking at his nemesis, the Amazon Prime delivery person. Uh, you know, they, oh, there's bad blood there. They've got a beef. I don't know what my dog has against the Amazon guy, but he's after, she's after him every time he comes. Okay. I was doing a, a round table with CEOs and one CEO is talking and all of a sudden this toddler climbs on her and says, oh, excuse me, excuse me for a moment. I think we're all understanding in, in Zoom and shelter at home that these things happen. But you're going to eliminate those things for your 90 second video on it. And then you're going to post it to YouTube. And the more of those videos are up there, the more chances people have to experience you to hire you for what you really do. And this whole client attraction chain reaction is about what happens as a result. And what happens as a result is we find people get 4x to 20x back in fees. So in other words, let's say you invested 20,000 in your marketing over the year, you should be getting 80 to 400,000 back in new client fees either speaking fees, and 
like one of our authors who used to speak for 10,000, she said, well, now I'm getting 5,000 to deliver that same speech on YouTube, um, you know, virtually on Zoom for the group. Um, but she goes, I'm better with the 5,000. I didn't have to go anywhere. Uh, you know, so actually we're in a great opportunity as people are rethinking these things. Do I think a vaccine's coming? I do. I, I think Bill Gates is on this. I don't have to worry about it. Bill Gates is all over this. Uh, one of my clients is a president of a big pharma. Oh, oh they're on this. You know, they're, they're coming up with this. They're all in a group effort to get it. Yeah, it's coming. However, a lot of us are going to look at, do we really need to get on planes and behind windshields and cars to have meetings with people? Did that make sense? There'll be a lot less of it. Okay, so I'm wrapping it up now. Again, are there any questions? Uh, let's look at uh, the Zoom chat. Um, is there any questions you had in Zoom that I could answer quickly before I wrap this up? Uh, I'm seeing some thank yous. I'm seeing some other things. Um, appreciate those. Okay, with that, is there an audio book yet? <laughs> the cobbler's children always go shoeless. Um, we're working on so many audio books for our clients. Uh, guess who got pushed to the end of the line? But uh, thank you for that. I'll, I'll raise it at the production meeting. Where's my audio book? Um, we really believe in audio books. Uh, they're just taking off and people don't have time to read books or they'll respect books, but... Uh, they rather hear you. Or in my case, I hire professional actors to be me. Um, I rather have somebody playing Henry DeVries than actual Henry DeVries there. I think that's because I see myself as a writer. At the end of the day, I'm a writer and uh, I do speak because it's like people want me to read their, the book to them. <laughs> that's what I say a lot of consulting assignments are. They just want you to read your book to them, um, but without the book in front of them. Okay, with that, I'm going to end today. I hope this was helpful to you. Again, you get a question, shoot it to me at Henry DeVries at Indie Books. No, Henry. Oh. I put it in the chat. Thanks. It's in the chat. Henry at Indie Books, I N D I E Books, I N T L dot com. Uh, maybe it would be a nice Forbes column. Uh, always looking for ideas. Uh, I've got answers. I need more questions. Okay, thanks everybody. Have a good day and it was good seeing you. This is how you applaud. I'm, I'm, I'm shilling now. This is how you applaud in Zoom. So uh, thank you for your attention today. Bye-bye.